Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Welcome, everyone, to Motor Week Podcast number 39. I'm John Davis, and I'm sitting in Studio C with our head writer, Shamit Choksi. Hey, John. Our associate producer, Ben Davis. Hello. And our reporter extraordinaire, Stephen Chupnik. Hello. We'll have our lightning round and our Motor Week mailbag later in this podcast. But first, a hybrid that's fun to drive from Honda. Is that possible? And a highly anticipated debut of the 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Let's go to the Fun side of the driving equation. First, the Honda CRZ. All right, Shamit, is this the long awaited return of the Honda CRX? I knew you were going to ask me that. I think it I think it is. You know, I mean, first of all, this car, the official name is what? The Honda CRZ Sport Hybrid Coupe. Which is a pretty interesting name. It is a pretty interesting name because they put the word sport before they put the word hybrid, which tells you a lot about what this car is uh, is out to do. Uh, it is, um, let's just start with it, what's under the hood. I mean, it is a hybrid, but it has a 1.5 liter engine from the fit. So it's a larger engine so, than either the Civic or the, or the, the inside. inside. That's correct. Um, uh, it is, uh, again, it's a hybrid, so the fuel economy is great. Uh, we're talking 36, 38 on the highway. With, uh, it has two, two transmissions, so with the CBT, and 31, 37 with a six-speed manual. The manual transmission. Right. How and cool is that? That is very, very cool. Yeah, Ben Davis is doing backflips <laughs> over this manual. It's the first hybrid offered, uh, I believe, in North America mm-hmm. with, a, with a manual transmission. Again, speaking to the sport aspect of this car. And they geared the transmission kind of interesting. Interestingly, didn't they? Uh, they did. They did. Uh, actually, the way it's set up is uh, the first five gears are uh, are geared toward performance. Mm-hmm. The sixth gear is uh, is more of a uh, of a fuel economy gear. And even if you go for the CVT, it's got paddle shifters. It does. So you have paddle shifters, or you have a manual. Either way, there's a, again a sporty uh, sporty feel to it. But they didn't stop there, did they? Uh, Hardware, the the suspension, the tires, right, everything. Uh, it's all sort of performance gear. The, the whole chassis sort of uh, uh, the whole chassis system is that um, the car is agile. It's uh, and you just brought the CRX up that disappeared back in what ninety ninety one. That was they went away, right? Yeah, and yeah, all through the 80s. and this yeah. is sort of the modern social uh, socially conscious version um, reincarnation, let's just say, of that vehicle. Ben. Well, I put it this way. I mean, obviously, this thing is crazy sporty hybrid. And um, since Honda's out of Formula One and the NSX is, I think, on hold, Mm -hmm. it's obvious all this uh, sporty energy has got to be concentrated somewhere. And I'm just so glad that it's in a sporty hybrid. It's it's very exciting. Um, I heard some uh, Japanese market specs, um, 0 to 60 and 10.5, quarter mile and 17.6. Not a screamer, but... Well, the the old CRX was not as fast as a lot of people like to remember. Even the last ones, the 1.6s, they were basically eight and a half seconds, right. zero to 60. So, and a lot of them were, were well over nine. So, in a way, even though it's not going to be uh, a screamer, with the electric motor boost, it'll probably feel better. Well, it does feel better. What I'm right. talking about feels better than I think it actually uh, numbers indicate. And right. they were still fun to drive. Yeah. Right. A ball to drive. So. I think that's what it's about. It's I about mean, the really Honda managed. Fit's a, a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. Anything from the Facebook area? Yeah, I think the main concern from people is what is the performance level and how much does it cost? Uh, those were the two big uh, things that people were curious when they saw it. And they definitely did see the CRX and they said, this is, it looks exactly the same, but we want. We want the performance of that in a hybrid. Well, they, they pretty much got it. And Honda said it's going to be priced under $20,000. So it'll, it'll be priced right about where the Insight is, except uh, I suspect just a little bit less. Yep. And you'll be able to outfit it with sporty seats and a nice interior and navigation and all the bells and whistles. It looks like it's got a lot of the inside styling, especially in the back. It does, but it's cool looking. Yeah, yeah it's I cool mean, tremendously cool. Yeah, looking. I really yeah. like it. And the sporty version, people said that this is the first thing that's come up for that kind of car in an electric or you bet. or anything since like the Tesla. And the Tesla is not affordable for anyone 
who is a normal person. Yeah, it seats two people, the CRZ does, and it's got a shelf in the back, or I think it's a, it's actually a couple of compartments, so you can carry. It's got decent luggage space. It's got a fold-down partition. Uh, Cool-looking interior, uh, you know, blue gauges that Honda's been using that sort of just look more like a spaceship. So, cool, cool vehicle. I'm totally rooting for this one. Okay, let's uh, go to the other side of the mountain and take a look at the 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Here's a vehicle. The Grand, original Grand Cherokee sort of made it off-roading with luxury like no one had ever done before. Uh, the current vehicle we have now has uh, uh, been around for quite a while. This is the third generation, the new one. And, Ben, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, um, it's really starting to put a serious blur on the line between um, American luxury utility and um, the European competition where all the your technology and bells and whistles were usually in the European side. But now you can get the same stuff pretty much in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. I mean, you can get Terrain Select, um, which lets you choose between sand, mud, sport. There's an automatic mode, snow and rock. And you can get a quadrilift air suspension system Mm -hmm. that uh, if you have the um, Terrain Select as well, you can raise it up to 2.6 inches, giving you a total of 11 inches of ground clearance. Um, The interior is... um, is is right in line with the European uh, market as well as far as uh, fit and finish and craftsmanship uh, materials and stuff. It's really a rich looking vehicle. We should point out that it is based on the Mercedes ML. Yes, yes. And most of the design was done when uh, uh, Daimler still owned Chrysler. That is true as well. Um, and even the interior was designed by an ex Mercedes uh, designer. Hmm. It, it's still very recognizable as a Grand Cherokee. Uh, they they did not mess around with the uh, uh, the visual aspect. I mean, it's smoother, but I certainly think it. You know, I, as soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. Yeah, it definitely sports the, the uh, very Jeep quali- Jeep look through the grill and headlights. Big improvement in interior room. From tra- there is a definite improvement in interior room. Um, I mean, the back seat was always cramped before. I've sat in one at the auto show. You've driven it. Uh, but did, I don't know if you got in the back seat, but I noticed a little you know, more leg room than I was uh, used I, to. There's definitely more leg, more knee room, and it reclines now, too, mm-hmm. with more room behind the seats as well. And the, uh, the uh, tailgate has a glass. The glass partition is a standalone hatch as well. Hmm. Powertrains. Standard V6, the new Pentastar. That's, this is the first application of this, this engine. This is, yeah. Uh, they're coming 290 horsepower with uh, variable valve technology. gives you better fuel economy. And the 5.7 Hemi with 360 horsepower. Um, the V6 will tow 5,000 pounds, and even the V8 is up over 7,000 pounds. Wow. Now, you said that even though this new 6 is a lot more powerful than the one it replaces, it's still a heavy vehicle, and it's still it's adequate, but... Right, it, it's... It, it, I was hoping the Pentastar would be a barnstormer in this vehicle, but it's, it, is, it is adequate. And on the trail, um, I would prefer to have the Hemi over the, over the 6. No, uh, no replacement for displacement. Stephen, anything from the uh, well, email? Well, the, the, every, a lot of people commented on, mm-hmm. on the suspension, mm-hmm. the, the, the lift suspension mm-hmm. that said that, you know, that, that is the— That's the, pretty trick. That it is really com- comparable to your Range Rover, your your Land Rovers, yeah, that kind of your higher handsome. end, um, mm-hmm. it, with, you know. But uh, I'd say, that, I mean, just the look of it, it, it's bigger, it looks bigger, and the interior is incredible. They, they've done some interesting things, and I think it was probably, I mean, they have a removable front spoiler so that their uh, a, approach angle will not be sacrificed. So I think they've done some that along with the extra ground clearance from the uh, air suspension seems to me they've done a lot of stuff for the off-roader to make sure that people say, okay, this is a new vehicle. It's more sophisticated. And by the way, it's the first time a Grand Cherokee's had an independent rear suspension. Uh, but it's still versatile. You can still take it anywhere you want to go with it. Oh, I had it in Moab. Uh, yeah. I did have the uh, front spoiler. It does come off pretty easily. Where'd you, where'd you put it? The front, well, that, they collected them and, and uh, held them oh, back in the rear. So you didn't really see how much space <laughs> yeah. it took up on the inside. I think you just strap and, it to the roof. And Ben and I, uh, when he came back, he was telling me that uh, they have an option for Flow TV and yeah. that, that you can get. And uh, if anybody doesn't know, Flow TV is a, a mobile TV owned by Qualcomm. 
but Chrysler has put them as an option, put that as an option. We had in, it in, in a, in a, town, a, and a town and country minivan. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Okay, moving on now to our lightning round. We have two minutes before um, Michelle rings our bell. Rings our bell. Yeah, all righty. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> now, okay, when the bell rings, our time is up. It's the summer blockbuster movie season. Okay, we recently heard that 007's Aston Martin from Goldfinger and Thunderball will be auctioned off in October. This brings up the whole subject of movie cars, and I'll even say TV cars as well. Would you pay top dollar for a movie car? What's your favorite? If you had a chance to bid on it, what one would you, among all the ones that have been out there, what would strike your fancy? Okay, this clock has started. <laughs> So hard to narrow it down to one, but if I had to do one, it would be the Mad Max uh, Interceptor. Why? <laughs> Just so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I saw the Supercharger jump on in the second one, that was a, a deal for me. <laughs> Steven? I, it, I have to go with Kit. Uh, oh, you know, and good. only technicality, uh, NBC Thank did you, make Steven. a TV movie. Did you uh, want the first one, the original one, or uh, the it, second one? Well, it's got to be the original, but it's, an 82, it's it, right? yeah, I mean, it, it, ta- it talks to you, it drives itself, <laughs> it navigates itself, you can fall asleep. It's got to it come can... with the watch that you can talk to it. Yeah. Exactly. All Hollywood magic, but cool car. All right. I, I Mr. Choxy. I got to go with the Trans Am, too, but this one's a 77, and it belonged to one smoky. And the, the bandit. bandit. Very Bert. good. Bert. Well, yeah, we were we were talking about this in the office before we came to the studio, and Ben actually hit it right on uh, what my car would be. It is the 1966 Lincoln Continental with suicide doors that was used as the death mobile in Animal House. Mm-hmm. And we were just in the office watching it, and that is, without a doubt, my car. <laughs> if I had to bid on something... Uh, and I wonder whatever happened to that car. I mean, it probably got chopped up uh, and or, or put in the back. Actually, I think I actually saw the car at Universal once hmm. at the, one of the theme parks. But who knows if it's still around. But if you had $7 million, which is what the 007 oh, yeah. car is going to, you could buy all four. You know, so. th- that's been auctioned off a number of times before. And I've actually seen it a couple of times. It's a cool car, but I'm not sure it's worth $7 million. No, <laughs> so, uh, notable runner-ups, though, would yeah. have been uh, Steve McQueen's Bullet. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that, the 390 Mustang GT from that movie. Uh, the Batmobile, 60s era from The me. original one with George hey, Barrister. Wait, wait, let me throw one at 81 DeLorean from Back to the Future. <laughs> 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 Family truckster from vacation. <laughs> nice. Very good. And basically, I guess that ends our lightning round. And let's move on now to our Motor Week mailbag. If you've got a question that you'd like to answer on one of our future podcasts, it's easy to get it into the play. Just go to our MotorWeek.org website. You can submit your question. And if you're choosing, round of applause coming up, folks, here, you get a free Motor Week t shirt. Yeah. And we just sent one out to Steve, who's uh, not too far from our studio here in Owings Mills. He's in Hagerstown, Maryland, and here is his question. I have been buying VWs since 1995, and I have owned one diesel, which I regret getting rid of. I am thinking of buying a gently used Mercedes-Benz E320 CDI or a new Bluetech with 50,000 miles or less. I've noticed that a certified pre-owned Mercedes isn't too much more than a totally decked out Golf TDI. Long question. Should I stick with my tried and true VW or venture out with an all-luxury E320 diesel certified? Okay, so you got a small car with a diesel brand new versus a nice luxury midsize car backed with a good warranty. Could there be a harder question to answer? I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, give me a coin. I'll flip it. Uh, you know, what's it for? That's what he doesn't really tell us. Right. Is he going to drive long distances or does he want really good comfort? Backroad spirit. Or is he want, since he lives up in Hagerstown, which those of you that don't know, that's in the mountainous area of Maryland. Does he like to take the back roads and have a good time and want that extra torque, you know, to kind of mm-hmm. get himself around the corners? It's a real, real hard question. Yeah. Um, I always think new is better than used. I don't care what the deal yeah. is. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. I don't mean because of value, but I mean I just thinking of wear and tear and parts and everything. But a certified used car has almost everything uh, redone. Stephen, do you have a, I, a comment? My, my thing is always. I think the it's warranty. a hung jury here. Well, otherwise, I, I think the warranty is always the big thing on used and, and new. And I know that a lot of these Mercedes well, the CPO, and, the certified used cars, yeah. give you basically a new car warrant. Yeah, yeah and, there is a warranty. And, yeah. and that, but the, and that's and that's always the thing with the Mercedes. It's you know, and, and I know Lexus has that same thing. And I think that's the big thing. It really does depend on what he's going to be driving. You had something uh, else. Uh, well, I mean, you know, the VWs are. Uh, Again, I'm going to go with the new car because I feel the same way as you do, John, about that. But a new VW, the, the VWs are just really well-made car. Well, I mean, they've always been well-made. They are fun to drive. Yeah. They're just, and they're comfortable too. I know the Benz gives you that touch of luxury, that, that hit of luxury. But VW is not. Big hit. Yeah. And if you've been driving VWs for so long, yeah, I'd say yeah, why I'd not stick with what Benz. I know. Yeah. Well, that's I, I was going to say go for the Benz. Oh, really? <laughs> <driving> <laughs> VWs but yeah, but long. you're the used car guy, so I don't know. You I mean, know, Steve. I think basically it's a little bit of a hung jury. It really comes down to what kind of driving you want to do, and whether or not you basically want to be a little more comfortable on a long trip or want to be a little more spirited. You've obviously done your homework and picked out two cars that both fit your bill for about the same price. So congratulations for that. Very two great picks. And that brings to an end this Motor Week podcast. I want to thank our all the folks here in the studio. Shamit Choksi, Ben Davis, and Stephen Chupnik, our audio engineer, David Wainwright, our podcast creator, Bob Mixter, our producer, Michelle Parker. The lady with the bell. And she's giving us a wrap-up, so we're gone for now. I'm John Davis. We hope you join us next time for more Motor Week podcasts. And be sure to watch Motor Week on your public television stations everywhere. You have been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at motorweek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.